afternoon, everyone. This is Inez E. Dickens, New York State Assemblywoman <clears throat> from the 70th Assembly District in Manhattan, representing Harlem, some of East Harlem, some of West Harlem. Happy and blessed Good Friday. This is the holiest of seasons, and it's quite apropos that we at the end of March, or the beginning of April, are recognizing hidden figures, phenomenal women who serve us in our communities throughout the city and throughout the state, who go unrecognized often, but yet they continue to represent in their various fields, they fight for their communities, they push for legislation, they see to it that there's, there's uh, services brought to their communities. This is just a small way of saying thank you. I welcome all to this segment of Represent NYC with MNN, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. We will be joined today by a fantastic group of speakers. Ms. Leilani Irvin, Ms. Maria Davis, Ms. Cecily Harris, Ms. Peggy Morales, Mrs. Sylvia Tyler on behalf of her uh, late daughter, April Tyler, and Ms. Monique Jackson Dickens. I promise no relation, I promise. I, I want to start with Leilani. She is the Manhattan Borough Director of the Department of Social Services, which is definitely a hidden figure. And I, I want her to uh, start getting involved more politically. Leilani? Hello, greetings. Now tell us just quickly a little something that you, you do to, to be a hidden figure. Well, first I have to give you a big thanks and honor um, for, for acknowledging me and for seeing me always. Um, for quite some time I've been in the trenches. I'm very a behind the scenes type of woman. Um, and you know, it, I have to feel a lot more comfortable with standing in the light and standing in the front. And for women listening, sometimes we're, you know, always in the background and the behind the scenes, but we have to be okay and feel more comfortable with being out in the front. Um, because it doesn't mean anything other than that you're you're doing you're doing something good, you're doing something right. Uh, so but to answer your question, um, you know, the work that I'm currently doing and have been doing for some time now in the city of New York and in the village of Harlem is truly God's work. Um, I have the distinct pleasure and honor to work on behalf of our most vulnerable New Yorkers in need who are unsheltered. Uh, and this work that I do on a daily basis is heavy work and at times very emotional work as I help aim to dispel and remove myths and stigmas that's attached and associated with being homeless. Um, I tell folks all the time, there by the grace of God goes I. Uh, anybody, anybody can be a paycheck away from being homeless, an illness away from being homeless. Uh, you can be experiencing an unfortunate disaster like a fire or a flood. No one's above the fray. And um, a lot of times people think that it can't be them, but that's just not true. You never know what today or tomorrow will have to offer you. And so with that, my job is to help educate the masses and people in community about painting the picture in the face of the people we service. Um, you know, that this is someone's relative, this is someone's mother, father, a daughter um, in our system or even on the street. And it takes the whole community, it takes policy, it takes great legislators like yourself and others to help try to, you know, um, reform and uh, create healthy solutions that can help people get people grounded and on their feet and sheltered and housed. Well, thank you, Leilani, for doing doing such a, a, a having such a pos position. If you look at the Bible, that was done by uh, Christ to to feed the homeless and and shelter them uh, uh, to provide clothing, and that's exactly what you're doing. So thank you so much, Leilani, and thank you for being here. Thank you. And my girl Maria Davis. Maria is a HIV AIDS activist and a music industry insider who has worked tirelessly within the community uh, to combat HIV and AIDS and to bring awareness to it so that people didn't fear it, but instead understood it. Assemblywoman Inez, mm -hmm. the great one, 
<laughs> our fearless leader. <laughs> I, want, I want you to tell us a little something about what you have done, a little something about your fight for HIV and AIDS, and the, you know, something, a little something about the music industry. You're an insider. You won't, that's what you did. Well, I'm inside trying to get them to understand how important it is to get tested for HIV in the music industry and throughout the industry, film industry, anybody that will listen to me to make sure that, you know, the images and the uh, examples that are being shown on TV and social media to our children. It is important that we do the work, not only for myself, but for everybody to have that conversation. And since COVID, it seems like HIV and AIDS has been a forgotten virus. It is still there, it's still moving. People are still getting in infected. Unfortunately, African-American, black and brown people make up the highest numbers, especially women and our youth and men who have sex with men. So it is important for us not only to continue our health journey, whatever that health journey is, making sure we eat right, our immune system is right, because we know we got hit by COVID very hard. So it reminds me of the epidemic, the pandemic with HIV and AIDS. And you know, in the beginning, it was like, black people can't get it. Yes, we do. We are always on the crossroads of all, unfortunately, we're number one in all health disparities, high blood pressure, diabetes, anything you could think of, we are on, we're number one. And we have to change that in our community. And it won't only take me, but it will take each and every one of us, especially our women. You know, we're on the forefront of taking our children to the doctor, making our men go to the doctor, filling out, you know, going to their doctor's appointment. And we know men with COVID, men would hit very hard. And we had a lot of men's fatalities. So we have to really get into our community, whether it's in the music industry, whether it's on the streets, whether it's our homeless brothers and sisters, domestic violence. We need to be in all areas. So I'm not just an HIV AIDS activist, AIDS survivor of 20 plus years. But I'm out here wherever I need to get in and wherever I need to fit in the same way you do, Inez and Cecilia and Leilani and Peggy and Monique. We all have to do this work. So it's not just one person, it's all of us. That's what Jesus' word was. He said, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. That means we have to take care of everyone who's hurting and who don't have a voice. Thank you so much. And can you just quickly give us, tell us a little something about your partnership with BET Wrap It Up? Well, you know, BET Wrap It Up, they had a platform. They don't really have it now, but they had a platform back in the day where they, you know, gave out condoms, but they had a lot of commercials on TV, you know, talking to our young people, which we don't have today. We have to think maybe Leilani because she's the youngest one coming into this community and a great, uh, great, great leader. And that, you know, we need some messaging around not only our young people, but messaging around how important they are, how worthy they are, and their life has a whole meaning. And we, we, we have to really pour into our young people that they are important. You are being recognized because you are a hidden figure. And, and I you. thank you because I believe in, in being recognized for the work you do while you're still here to smell those roses. Thank you. Peggy Thank you. Morales Casanova, my sister in the trenches. She's Democratic female district leader of the 68th AD and my girl, and she served for years as the state committee person. And we worked together um, to, because East Harlem and Harlem and West Harlem, we all have the same issues and problems. So she's been such an advocate for families with special needs, children, and uh, she deserves, she rarely gets recognized and she deserves it. Thank you. Give us a little background on what you've done. About 30 years ago, first of all, I want to say thank you. For me, it's a privilege to be honored among so many wonderful women who are doing this work, who are blazing the trail for so many other young women. And I hope that these young women learn something from what we have established and the foundation that we've laid so that they can rise and at some point blaze their own trail because this is the type of work that we should all be doing. So I wanna preface by saying that and thank you Inez for being a friend, for being a leader and for being a beacon of hope to our community. So about 30 years ago, I realized that I had something to offer a community that I saw was really not only lacking but just suffering 
from a lack of attention, um, not a lack of resources, but a lack of being connected to those resources. I happen to be blessed with a child with special needs. And that put me on the track to learn about not only my responsibilities, but also the responsibilities of the Department of Education to provide him with services. And so I applied myself and realized that there was a lot more to learn than just met the eye. So that made me an instant advocate for children with special needs. I realized that I found certain loopholes that I thought would be beneficial to other families. And I began to share those loopholes and to advocate for those people that were in that situation. I started that process. And as a result of that, I became, you know, involved in the leadership at different schools, at different levels. Then I realized that there was another need, immediate need, the need to address uh, our young men and the battles that they were waging on the streets. I immediately got involved having two young male uh, teenagers myself, and I created a neighborhood watch with the parents of those young people to safeguard against shootings, to encourage them to take a different path, and to really enable them to connect with resources that would provide them with not only vocational training, but jobs, essentially, that would keep them preoccupied and get them off the street. Beyond that, I've done a lot of work with housing. I've done a lot of work with advocacy in terms of schools and parents who are uh, monolingual in Spanish and are not able to navigate the, the myriad of, of different I guess, processes that are put out there by the Department of Education that make it very challenging for these parents to, to track. So um, I've done that. And I think that one of the, the things that I am proudest of is that being a district leader wasn't enough for me. So I used that to, I guess I customized the role, to be fair. I basically um, decided that as a district leader, sure, I can galvanize people. I can rally them around a particular issue around a person that I'm supporting in terms of assembly, city council or Senate. But I also felt that there was a need for me to connect these people in a larger way with resources. So I became one of the many tools that they can use when they need a notary, um, when they need an attorney, whether it's criminal, whether it's family, whether it's civil or it's housing, when they need services that have to do with Medicaid, Medicare, SSI, social security. And it enabled me to help in many other ways. So customizing the role of district leader opened those doors for me to connect people to what they needed. So, you know, I've been doing that work now for 30 years. Um, I became a district leader in 2009 and it's been a privilege and an honor to know that the people that I serve are people that are in need and they're from my community and that I'm making a difference. My greatest achievement has been um, salvaging um, a mentally ill woman and her two children from being put in the street, two years of non-paid rent. I connected her with the Department of Homeless Services. I connected her with HRA and they were able to pay the rent, safeguard her from being homeless and also provide the much needed services to her children. You've done a phenomenal job. Uh, you, you are indeed a hidden figure. Uh, thank you. I, I, so I want to say thank you. Now let's move on to the chairperson of Manhattan Community Board 10, my girl, Cecily Harris, who um, has been working tirelessly before she became chairperson, but even since then, and she is a, a, an attorney. So, uh, you know, Cecily, just give us a little something, a little background on yourself. Thank you so much, Assemblywoman Inez Dickens. Um, you are an inspiration to all of us on this call, always holding it down, representing women, getting into that all boys club and holding it down for us women. Thank you so much for that. I have been chair, I guess, for the past four years mm -hmm. um, of a Manhattan Community Board 10. Also, um, currently I'm the acting first deputy commissioner at the New York State Division of Human Rights. Before that, I was serving as, as an assistant district attorney in the Bronx under the Honorable Darcel Clark. Um, and then before that, I was an Accenture uh, consultant doing tech management. So I've had an abundance of careers, but what I can always say is that those careers and what I do in my personal and private life have always been geared towards 
towards serving others, towards doing something for the community, towards getting out of my own comfort zone in order to help others. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been a government worker for a very long time now, almost going on 20 years, kind of scary. But um, and in that and in serving the community board, um, I've been able to do so on a, a, a statewide level and even at the base level of the community, which is so important, bringing people together on common issues, making sure that the everyday person is heard in their own in their own space where they live. So we can affect, you know, good things to happen in one's own neighborhood. And that's empowering for people to be able to be able to affect that change right where they live and to see it happen. And that's one of the things that I think that I am striving to bring out in Community Board 10 and not just for you know Harlem, but we've also started these conversations borough-wide, realizing that as community boards, we do have a great power, and especially borough-wide, to affect change. And what happens downtown also affects, affects what happens uptown. So we need to realize that and come together on that level. So that's what I think I've been able to bring to the table um, as community board 10 chair. Truly a hidden figure from our community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The New York alumni chapter of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Inc. They're celebrating this year their 100th anniversary, 100 years of dedicated wow. service throughout the states of providing health services, of bringing to the forefront issues that sometimes have been forgotten. Monique Jackson Dickens, uh, no relation known, but I'm going to claim her. She's the president of the New York alumni chapter. Monique. Thank you so much. Uh, New York State Assembly women, Inez Dickens. It is an honor to be awarded this recognition as a hidden figure in our community, because that's exactly <laughs> Uh, what we do. Um, we are in our communities. We have been in our community um, for 100 years. And if you think about back in the 1920s with the women's suffrage movement, um, it led to the ratification of the 19th Amendment. The Great Migration led four charter members who were graduates of Howard University, led them to Harlem during that Great Migration. And they sought to really look after the community, the needs of the community. And so it is an honor that we, as members today, stand before you and celebrate 100 years of this community service to our communities. We are pride with um, recognizing that there are so many needs in our community from educational development, economic development, international awareness, physical and mental health, and political awareness. Um, as our sister Leilani stated, we are doing God's work as we are an organization founded on Christian principles. So yes, we are hidden figures because so many women in our chapter, including our uh, phenomenal member, Cicely Harris, are in their communities working and doing that work. Like I said before, uh, through our youth initiatives, our scholarship program, bringing information to the community about voter information, voter suppression, voter registration, making sure that all voices are heard in our community. When we talk about our health issues, we want to look at maternity mortality rates in our community with our women. Talk about economic fortitude. What does that mean in terms of generational wealth? How do we build generational wealth for our young people? And then looking at women entrepreneurs in our community and promoting small businesses in our community. So it's really an all hands on deck. So many of us work in the public sector. I too am an educator um, in the New York City uh, Department of Education as an assistant principal and as also a math teacher. So 
I know the importance firsthand of what it means to be there for everyone in our community because it's all about giving a hand up as we look to our next generations and uh, those years to come of what we want our community to look like, just like our founders uh, 100 years ago. Well, thank you so much, Monique, because you, as, as a woman, you are a hidden figure and you represent a, a just one of the phenomenal chapters of, of the Deltas that services the community. Uh, and I wanna give a special shout out to, to Nina Saxon, yes. who is also a member of your, your, yes, your chapter. And, and to say to, to all of the Deltas, thank you, thank you. And, and to say that you are accepting this award on behalf of all of the hidden figures now, our last one is a tribute to the late Miss April Tyler. Um, um, she died just about, I guess, two months ago, she passed. Suddenly, very unexpectedly, I served with April as a district leader. We were both, uh, Peggy, myself, and April, we were all district leaders together. Uh, so at most of the meetings, we all, the three of us always met. Um, and she filled many vital roles in West Harlem. She was a very strong housing advocate and organizer, a community reinvestment act expert. Um, and perhaps most importantly, she was a mother, she was a daughter and she was a loving friend. She was a, an undergrad from City College. She had a passion and a focus on housing and the ways in which tenant and homeowners could work to control their own destinies by having safe and secure housing. She didn't believe that you shouldn't own it. She believed you should own it. She believed that it should be um, uh, something that we should not ever forget about. And she was uh, founded the HDFC, which is a tenant ownership uh, the coalition of tenants who own the buildings in which they live. She was a very strong advocate for them. Um, she was a strong advocate of ownership because when they come and start telling us don't own, they're not talking in our best interest. They're not talking about what was just said to us by, my, by Monique about the generational wealth. And we have to accept on, on April's behalf, I'm sorry that we did not get a chance to present this to, to April direct. But I know that April is looking down upon us and know that we are giving this award, award to her and her mother is accepting it. Um, and Sylvia Tyler herself has been an educator for years. She retired from that as well as she served as state um, Democratic State Committee person from the 70th Assembly District uh, here in Harlem. Thank you so much, Sylvia. I'm, I'm so glad that, that Barry was able to get you on, welcome you. Um, not that you're not a hidden figure, but you did teach your daughter to be a hidden figure and she, she rose to the challenge of being a hidden figure. And we wanted to present to her posthumously uh, to April, as, as a hidden figure, yes, as a hidden figure. Sylvia, please, I know this is a difficult time. I, I know, but you have the strength. This is the holiest of, of seasons. And I know you have the strength. April had two sons and you have other grandchildren of which you have to continue to remain strong. And as difficult as it may be, I know that you're up to the challenge because you stood up to many challenges that were very, very difficult and you thought you would lose. This may be the hardest, but you, you, you've got this and, and you've got so many people that are at your back and lifting your wings. Sylvia. Yes, uh, I first I wanna say, Inez, you've always been uh, a duel to me. You, when we first came to Hall, when we got involved, in the HDFC, it was a till program that these were buildings that landlords abandoned because they didn't pay their taxes and they lost ownership to the city and the cities developed a program 
called the Tenant Interim Lease Program for the tenants to learn how to manage and become shareholders, HCFC co-op shareholders. And April was very much, and she did a lot to actually make this happen. She was like, and uh, said to me, to us, because we lived in, in uh, Yonkers, and she said, Harlem is coming back. Back over like 30 years ago, people were trying to get out of Harlem. Now it's turned around. But she said, Harlem's coming back. Let's go find uh uh, one, live in one of the, find one of these buildings. We found one right across from City College on 38th Street. And it, people, my family members thought we were crazy. We were on the seventh floor, no elevator, holes in the walls. Just, it, it, it was deplorable. But we stuck it out. And now I'll, I wouldn't want to tell you how much people are selling their, sh their units for. You know, those few people who want to move Oh, we'll have to sell. But anyway, April was always an innovator and she was always a person that saw the future and she worked hard. She was very uh, informed. And, and as far as housing was concerned, HDFC, she was considered one of the most knowledgeable people. And people, I, when she passed, I was so, uh, well, I knew how smart she was, but I didn't know just how many other people knew, so many cards and and phone calls and people coming to my house to talk about her. It was just amazing. So I, I know it's difficult, Sylvia, but you know, you you you're gonna continue the fight. You're gonna you know, you taught Sylvia the fight. You gave her that tenacious spirit that she had, and you taught her the value of community and not allowing other people to come in and usurp our power. And so you're just as much a hidden figure as, as April because you taught her that. And, and so as you, I, I know it's difficult, but I want you to know that as personally, I, I know the work that, and the dedication of April. I was blessed to be able to count her as a friend and a supporter, and she will be sorely, sorely missed by me personally, as well as by this community. This village has sustained a, a, a loss. She also taught younger people. So there are those that are going to step up. They can't take her place, but they can surround the hole that we now have in our hearts. So I thank you. I thank you, my hidden figure, Sylvia Tyler. Women making difference amid adversity. That's what you are, a hidden figure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to the great city of New York for opening your arms to, to watch us today. And thank you to Manhattan Neighborhood Network for allowing us this segment. Mm -hmm.